Hi there and welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend in which I'll try and cover the rest of meteorological autumn. Autumn so far has been very mild, especially in the south and in some places very, very wet. But there are signs that both those factors will change a little during next week. Here's how the jet stream looks into next week and it's a different shape and a different position compared with what we're currently seeing next week. There's this signal for the jet stream to be coming in, still affecting the UK, still bringing areas of low pressure, but coming in from the northwest. If we rewind the clock to the uh, current time, the time of recording, Wednesday the 15th of November, and you can see the jet stream is much flatter. It's coming in from the Atlantic. It is continuing to bring us areas of low pressure, just as it has done over the last few weeks. That's why the weather has been so stormy and the jet stream sitting across southern parts of the UK means that these low pressure systems continue for the time being to be coming in and affecting mainly southern parts of the UK and that's particularly the case at the start of Thursday. We begin the day with some heavy rain across South Wales, south and southwest England, a strong wind as well, 50 or 60 mile per hour wind gusts around exposed coasts of Cornwall for example and then other English Channel coasts later and that rain could cause some disruption. First thing, of course, it's coming on top of uh, saturated ground, 30 or 40 millimetres in places, particularly higher parts of southwest England. And so a few issues, perhaps a, a tricky rush hour Thursday morning. The rain does ease a little later in the day, but it's going to stay damp for much of Thursday across southern areas. Now, further north for North Wales, the Midlands, East Anglia, northwards it's drier, still a few showers, especially across eastern parts of the UK. And then later on into the afternoon for Northern Ireland, into parts of Scotland as well, those showers following in another band of rain, as well as those showers feeding in from the west. But overnight, the showers do ease away. We'll see clear spells developing and temperatures falling away as a result. So a touch of frost in places, low single figures, certainly a cold start to Friday, but a bright to start. And by the afternoon, plenty of sunshine up and down the country. Not many showers around by this stage. Many places will enjoy a crisp, bright autumn day. 8 to 9 Celsius in the north, 11 to 12 further south and southwest, but here the rain soon returns and that is associated with a warm front which is coming in from the southwest. Warm front typically means warmer weather and this one is no exception. We're going to see this plume of mild air come up from the southwest for the start of Saturday. But we keep the colder conditions at first across parts of central and eastern Scotland, a touch of frost in the northeast of Scotland and some snowflakes so for the hills and mountains as well as the rain bumps into that cold air. But it's much milder uh, as we start off Saturday further south and southwest. However, by mid-morning, well, it's looking like a wet and windy picture across many parts of the country. Not very pleasant at all if you're heading out on Saturday morning. Outbreaks of rain for most of the UK, a lot of cloud cover and a strong wind with 50 mile per hour wind gusts possible around southern coasts. The rain heaviest in the south once again and that rain really building up over the next few days in southern parts. But it does tend to ease off later in the day so a chance of some drier interludes by the afternoon, albeit with further showers pushing into Northern Ireland and Scotland as the day goes on. 10 Celsius in the north, 15, perhaps 16 Celsius in the south because of that warmer southwesterly breeze. And we've got that breeze in place for the start of Sunday, so it's generally a frost-free start. In places we'll see double figures on Sunday morning. Some brightness towards the southeast and the northeast as well, but further cloud and showery rain pushes in from the west through the day. I don't think you'll be far from a rain cloud on Sunday. Some of that rain will be heavy at times as well, and it'll be blustery with the strongest winds once again around southern coasts. Once again, 50 mile per hour wind gusts are possible. Lighter winds and less rain, I think towards the north, northern Scotland, northeast England, for example, seeing some brighter and more settled weather at times. And that's really the story through the next five days. This shows the total amount of rain between Thursday and Monday. And uh, although this rain scale was developed when we had Storm Babette with really exceptional rain amounts, and we're not seeing those rain amounts over the next five days. This just gives you an idea that we are seeing more wet weather in those places where the ground is particularly saturated. Hillier parts of Wales and the south and southwest with more than 50 mils in places. Ordinarily, wouldn't really be too 
bad, but given that's coming on top of saturated ground, could cause a few issues heading into the weekend. The main rainy spells, of course, being Thursday and Saturday morning with that drier spell on Friday. Now, all that means that uh, as the rain comes in, as the southwesterly winds come in, it is turning milder as well. As I mentioned, 15 Celsius in places like Plymouth on Saturday. And that's the warmest day. The temperature trend downwards then as we go into next week. And a similar trend, even if the absolute values aren't as high for Aberdeen. Why the change? Well, for the next few days at least, we're going to see low pressure sitting to the west and the jet stream bringing warmth from the southwest and an uh, awful lot of rainfall as well. But if we switch ahead to Monday and the jet stream changes shape, just as I mentioned at the beginning, a bit more of a wriggly jet stream and it's coming in across the UK from the northwest with low pressure now to the east and higher pressure building to the west. And that kind of weather pattern uh, for next Monday is that that's the most likely weather pattern as we begin next week. And it's really the theme through next week with a chance of higher pressure building towards the west and southwest, and that means less wet across southern and southwestern parts of the UK, with quite a number of showers coming in on a brisk northwesterly airflow for Monday and Tuesday. And so it's generally Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northwest England, North Wales, where we'll see the bulk of those showers. There'll still be weather fronts feeding in. For example, this is the most likely weather pattern for the middle of next week, but Low pressure will track further north than we've seen recently, and so those weather fronts will predominantly affect northern and northwestern parts of the UK. So it will be wettest and windiest across northern and western Scotland, drier than it has been towards the south with high pressure closer by. And then as we skip forward to next Friday, and again, we've got this high pressure building to the west, low pressure signalled over Scandinavia. This signal is well established in the main computer models. There are some uncertainties about the extent to which high pressure will build to the west and the exact position of low pressure over Scandinavia. And of course, that will make a difference in terms of exactly how strong the winds are, exactly where they'll be coming from, whether they'll be coming straight from the north or whether they'll be coming from the northwest, and also the distribution of rain and showers. But with this general signal well established, what's likely to happen is that we're going to see drier conditions towards the south and southwest. There'll still be some rain or showers, but it will be less wet than it has been. The bulk of the blustery showers will affect northern and northwestern parts of the UK. And with the winds coming from the north or northwest, it will turn colder with uh, return to frosts and fog patches by night. And also some of those showers will turn to snow over northern hills and mountains, but not really at lower levels. So something a bit colder into next week and that pattern, as I mentioned, is well established. This is the European model run, not just run once, but run 100 times. And this is the outcome, a strong signal for low pressure over Scandinavia, higher pressure to the west or southwest of the UK and this northwest of the airflow. This is the weekly mean anomaly. So this is the pattern throughout next week, Monday to Monday. If we skip forward another week and look at the same 100 computer model run, and what it's suggesting for the start of December, well, not much really. This just gives you the idea that it's a very weak signal for the start of December, not a strong signal like we've got for next week. And that would suggest that next week's weather pattern could be short-lived and we return to something closer to what we've had so much of recently, which is milder but also wetter weather. And one thing that uh, suggests that we'll return to that is the global weather patterns across uh, different oceans that we've got in place at the moment. We've got El Nino, of course, a good explainer on El Nino on the Met Office YouTube channel. This oscillation in sea surface temperatures and uh, pressure patterns in the Pacific, in the Pacific, yes, <laughs> it's the Indian Ocean I'm going to go on to next. But that, at the moment, the El Nino phase typically leads to wetter and milder weather at this time of year. We've also got a similar oscillation in the Indian Ocean, and that's currently in a positive phase. And that also correlates with wetter and milder weather in the UK at this time of year. So in the absence of a strong computer model signal, these two would suggest we're more likely to get wetter and milder weather as we begin the meteorological winter. But for the rest of autumn, at least, a little bit less wet and a little bit colder than it has been.